So on the bench today we have the makings of a static grass applicator, do-it-yourself static grass applicator. So I bought this on Amazon. I think I paid $30 for it. And then I acquired the other pieces, which I'll run through real quick before I open the bag. So uh, I got my strainer. Uh, I bought a three-pack of these from Amazon as well. Um, this is what's going to actually hold the static grass. Um, and then as you can see here, I bought this. What is this? This is uh, Schedule 40 pipe. It's one inch. And this is what I'm going to use to make my handle. Uh, you can see I traced around here already. I'm going to cut a hole in that. Um, and then the plan is I'll glue this piece onto here and then this will then come th through here, screw on, and that'll be what holds the container onto the handle. And you can see here I've already, the, this would not screw as long as it originally was, it would only screw in. It was sticking out about that far and obviously I need to be much closer. So I ended up just taking a razor saw and cutting it down to so there's only a couple of threads and so now I think I should be able to get it tight enough around for that. This is the mechanicals of it. Let's take a look at what's in the bag. And this is a thank you letter from um, the family that runs this online business, our, our Amazon business. Um, general safety warning. It then here's the instructions on how to build this. And then there was also this um, book, which is, uh, I guess, gives you an alternative way to build the static grass applicator. So this one's a little bit different. Uh, you've probably seen some uh, builds on YouTube where they put everything inside of this tube and uh, the, you know they have a 9 volt battery usually a switch to switch between a, an AC adapter um, and the 9 volt battery. This came with everything that you needed in this kit for like 30 bucks. So here's your high voltage generator and then you've got all of the parts here that make this quick and easy to to put together. There we go. So they provide you with banana plugs and jacks um, to make it easy to connect. And if we look in here about you can see here how they've got it set up. You've got your AC adapter that comes in to these two banana jacks. You have your on off switch and these are your um, the high voltage lead going out to your applicator and then your ground lead. So it's a little less convenient than having everything in the, the handle, I guess. You just plug in somewhere, and, um, but I think I can make, this allows me to make this as long as I want to make it uh, fairly simply. I can also, if I wanted to do it battery powered, I could just create a, a 9 volt battery, uh, get one of the little snap-on connectors for the 9 volt battery, put banana plugs on it and plug that in right there and have a 9 volt po totally portable in terms of not needing an AC outlet. First thing I'm going to do is assemble the mechanical pieces of this. So let me put this back on. It actually goes this way, these screws turn and then holds the box together. So let me start. I'm going to take this. I'm going to pop my... This is one of the things that I wanted to have was uh, some kind of a container that had these snap-on lids and I'm just going to take a exacto blade and I'm going to cut out this circle that I drew. Alright, this looks like I could potentially cut my fingers off, so let me uh, stop the camera finish cutting this out and then when I come back and hopefully I'll still have all ten fingers. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we got the hole cut out. I ended up just taking the exacto knife and just going around and around a bunch of times. Then I went to the other side and did the same thing and I switched to a brand new blade which I think helped quite a bit. I didn't realize how dull that other one was. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of sanding paper and just so we can see that this should fit in here real good. Go out to the garage, get a set of wide jaw pliers so I can put, tighten that down completely. It's almost there, so I think that should be good. 
And uh, while I'm out there, I'll go ahead and cut this down. I'll just throw a quick line on there. I'm off to the garage and uh, cut this, and I will be back in a moment. So here we go. I went and I tightened this down. It isn't still quite tight enough to keep this from spinning, so I may uh, end up putting a little epoxy around uh, to hold that, just to keep that from spinning. Um, you can see here I cut just with the hacksaw. The next thing, I guess I could use that for a cap if I wanted to, because I did not buy a cap. But before I do anything, I need to um, drill a hole here, which is where the positive lead that's going to come in and will be soldered to the screen. So I need to do that. Um, but we also, what I need to do is, I need to cut this screen or remove it from the strainer here. And we need to flatten it out and then I'll need to do another cutting here to get, and then what we'll do is we'll epoxy this to the inside. I wonder if I could just cut Let me figure out how I'm going to do that off camera and I will come back once I've got it figured out. Well, I accomplished the first part of the mission. I actually just started peeling this ring up because the, the mesh was simply pinched against the these two pieces. This is the actual handle. Um, and then, so I just started peeling that up and was able to just pull the mesh out. So this go in the garbage can and what I'll do is I'll mark this it I will trim it with a pair of, of uh, tin snips then I will epoxy it in then we can start on the electronics so let me turn the camera off I'll go away I'll put this together and I'll show you how it comes out when I get it done well I was successfully able to cut out the circle oh, missed a little more sanding there um, well, more or less a circle, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, epoxy in the screen mesh. All right, so I've got my two-part epoxy here. I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. So now I'm going to put. Some... I'm going to go pretty liberal with this application. I want that screen to stay in place. Okay. I'll take the screen and I'm just going to press it down in. Once this dries, I will be back. So the epoxy is now all completely dried, and so we've got our screen material successfully glued to the top. Uh, this is dried here now, so this doesn't spin. So now we've got the mechanical piece of the applicator uh, completed as far as we can go at the moment. So now what I want to do is go ahead and get started on the electrical side. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out how I want to assemble this. I don't think I'm going to use this switch. I'm going to replace this with a smaller uh, toggle switch just because it would be easier to draw. drill a quarter inch hole, put that in there. And, and this, this switch would be nice, but I don't feel like dealing with drilling out this big hole. I am going to use, I think, the binding posts for the output to the applicator. So the wire is going in there. But on the input side, I think instead of using a second set of binding posts to plug the power adapter in, I'm going to go ahead and just put a standard uh, three and a half millimeter jack in there and then um, just put the appropriate plug on the power supply. So just plug in and then I can also again uh, wire up a, a nine volt battery to to plug adapter, so I wanted to run it off of nine volts, a nine volt battery, I could. So I think what I'll do is I'll plan to put the outputs up here. We'll have a toggle switch down here, and the, the power may be coming in from the side even. So all, all of that said, I need to just think about where can I put this. I guess I'll just put it that way, and that would allow it to have clearance 
because the binding posts would be here, the toggle switch would be down here, and the power coming in, you know, will be on the side or something. So I think I'll plan to do that. So now what I want to do is I'll just try to, I'm going to eyeball this, take the Sharpie, eyeball center both left and right, and top and bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to mark two holes on this side, and then I'm just going to mark the center hole over here, so we'll have three points of contact. To drill those holes, um, I'll step away from the camera, I'll drill those holes, I'll find some appropriate mounting uh, screws, and then I will be back. So off camera, I went ahead and I, I dug through my junk bins, and I found this toggle switch here, which I drilled a quarter inch hole, and then mounted the toggle switch. So that will be my on off. Um, you can also see I, I found, if you can see, I found two screws that were the same and a third one that was slightly different. Draw, drilled the, I think there are one eighth, in, one eighth inch holes to match the mounting holes on the high voltage generator. And then I countersunk them with a quarter inch drill bit. <clears throat> and uh, I still need to actually tighten these up completely. I guess the next thing I'll do is um, I will figure out where I'm going to put the binding posts and I'll drill the holes to mount those and then once and then I need to find the power supply jack um, that I'm going to use and so let me go find all those pieces I'll probably go ahead and drill the holes and mount these and the power jack and when we come back, we'll do the wiring. So I rustled through my, again, through my junk bins, and I came up with this 3.5 millimeter two connector plug, uh, and, and then this jack here, which I've already went ahead and drilled a quarter inch hole there, mount that in, nothing's hooked up yet. So this will get uh, soldered on to the ends of the wall wart that I dig out to use with this, and then in order to have power, you just plug it in. You'll still have to then flip the switch on, and then you will have high voltage here at the outputs of uh, to the applicator. So, on the back here, you can see I went ahead <laughs> because knowing me, I would screw these up, and so I marked a minus and plus, which matches minus and plus. All right, so uh, all that's left now um, is to go ahead and do the wiring here in the box, then create the wires that are run to here, soldering the positive connector onto the screen, and then find a power and adapter, put the plug on the end, and give her a test. Give me just a moment, I'll be right back. Let me grab some wire and, and what I need. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished up all the wiring. So you can see the wiring is pretty straightforward and simple. Um, <clears throat> the power is coming in from the power jack right here. This is your ground connection into the power supply, into the high voltage generator. The, the positive voltage is coming in and going to the switch. And then the switch feeds the red wire on the high voltage generator. So this red and black wire right here are your high voltage, uh, are your voltage inputs to the high voltage generator. Then the thick black wire coming out of this goes over to the negative connection for the applicator. And the green wire that comes out of here goes over to the positive connection. I wired that all up. And I'll see if I can get the, all these wires back in. We'll close it up. And this thing has these built-in screws that hold it closed. And as you can see right here, there, there, there was a depression right here in the center. And I didn't account for that when I put the high voltage gener generator right there in the middle. And it wouldn't actually close. So I, I cut that out and I'm just going to put a sticker over it or do something. And now here's the finished product. So you can see I actually here I took my P-Touch labeled maker and I added high voltage ground, the on. And then down here you can see plus 9 volts DC. And on the applicator side... Uh, I went ahead and I twisted the wires together and put uh, zip ties on both ends. I still have to figure out how I'm going to do this end of it. Um, uh, I need, still need to get a cap to go on this end, which I did, forgot to buy. I think I mentioned that in a previous section. So here it is. Here's my applicator. And again, I'm, 
I want to say, and I'll post a link down in the description below, I think I paid not more than $30 for the kit, which came with all the electrical pieces and the housing, and then I spent a few dollars at Lowe's to pick up the PVC pieces. I ordered this from Amazon, like I said, I got a three pack of them for, I don't know, six bucks or something. So, and then this was just something that I had laying around my house along with the plugs. So if you had to go out and buy any of these other things, it would be a few more dollars. I wanted to try making one myself rather than either buy a cheap one off of Amazon and run the risk of it not actually working very well or spending a lot of money to get the, you know, the ones that are established and, and definitely work well. So let me set up my test piece and then we'll come back and take a look at uh, how this performs. Okay, I've got my test block here. I've gone ahead and painted it with a light tan so that there's a little something something that looks a little more dirt like underneath the grass hopefully give us a better indication of how it's going to look I've drawn a line kind of in the middle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white glue I'm going to use the applicator but without having it plugged into the static high voltage generator and use the same grass same applicator everything except the high voltage static generator working and we're going to see how that comes out what that looks at and then we'll compare it to doing the same thing again with the actual static generator turned on and I made a mixture of a few different types uh, colors of grass so hopefully give us a little bit of variety I don't know if that's going to matter and I'll go ahead and just dump all of that in here close it up we are not plugged in Go ahead and apply some grass. Okay, we'll uh, we'll let that dry, knock off the excess, clean up, and do the other side. Well, uh, apparently, when I went to film the segment where I put the uh, grass on using the static applicator, I had turned the, the camera on, got sidetracked, forgot, turned the camera on again, which is turning it off, failed to film that entire segment, and then uh, what I did manage to capture was in between, after I got that done, looking at it and before I filmed what I thought was going to be the final segment, which I also didn't end up videoing because I was actually turning the camera off again. Um, we did this, I did the application just by painting the glue on the same way I used this T-pin here, stuck it in, attach the negative lead of the static grass applicator and then using the same grass mixture I applied it on here so I mean hopefully you're able to see let me let me zoom in here um, significant difference this side here on the left is the one uh, without having the static turned on and this side is the with the static high voltage turned on so clearly a, a big difference just in terms of the density of coverage and I'm assuming that's because these are all sticking straight up and so they're able to get down in there and, and more densely fill it in and then hopefully if I if I turn this on its side you can clearly see the difference where the grass is and you can see they're hopefully sticking up so clearly it looks like it's working I'm very pleased with the result I did a quick calculation of, of the total cost I think it was like right around approximately forty eight dollars again I, I had some things that I added that if you had to buy them it would make it a little more expensive but then again you can build it just like the instructions say with all of the pieces that uh, that came in the box and not add anything extra the only thing you would need is to find your uh, wall wart AC power supply to give you your nine or twelve volts DC and then everything else um, beyond what I bought but all the electronics are con contained in the the kit that I bought from Amazon. So anyway, I call that a success. I'm looking forward to using this uh, to put some static grass down on my other diorama and try some other projects with it. So hopefully you guys uh, find that interesting. If you uh, enjoyed it, you'll get notified of any future videos. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you down the rails.